Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 15. In this tutorial, we will learn how to account for the sale of accounts receivable, also known as factoring, both with and without recourse. There are two learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to account for factoring of accounts receivable without recourse, and the second to account for factoring of accounts receivable with recourse. This tutorial relies on the Maestro Corp example. It is not necessary to download the, the accompanying file. You can if you like. All the information is presented here as well. So in this situation, Maestro Corp wishes to sell 75% of its receivables, currently at $875,000, to a factoring firm. And the factor assesses what we call a finance charge on the amount factored and retains an amount equal to 3.5%. To protect itself against uncollectible accounts and we'll see how to deal with this. So the first requirement is simply to record the journal entries for both parties, so Maestro and Receivables are us, without recourse. We begin by accounting on the seller side. We're going to have a debit to cash because Maestro will receive cash from the factor, but we don't know exactly how much yet and the easiest way to figure the cash out is to leave it uh, until the end. We know that there will be an amount due from the factor that is related to the holdback. The factor assesses a holdback of 3.5% of the amount sold to protect itself. So if all of the receivables are recoverable, then the holdback will be paid to Maestro. We can calculate the amount of that holdback as 875,000 total accounts receivable times the amount sold. Recall from the data that Maestro is selling only 75% and the holdback or the amount that is due from the factor is three and a half percent so that results in 22,969. We can also now calculate a gain or a loss on the sale of accounts receivable. Very rarely will you come across a situation where there are gains on a sale or factors of accounts receivable we determine the loss to be based on the finance fee. So our 875,000 times 75% times that 2% finance fee is called a loss on the sale of accounts receivable and that's $13,125. Next, we can calculate well, how much of the receivable are we actually selling off and that is simply the total receivable times the 75% and that's 656,250. In order for our journal entry to balance, where debits must equal credits, if we take 656,250 and subtract these other items, we can end up calculating the amount of cash to be 620,156. Now, there's also a proof for that calculation. If we look at $875,000 in total receivables, times the 75% sold, and we multiply that times the leftover amount of the sum of 2% finance fee plus 3.5% holdback. So these two together are 5.5%, while 100% minus 5.5% is 94.5%. So 94.5% of the 75% sold is 620.156. Now we can go over to the factor side. Well, if Maestro, the seller, is giving up 656,250 in receivables, that's going to be picked up by the factor. Of course, if we've calculated 22,969 to be due from the factor, then receivables are our, us, who is the factor, must also recognize a liability, the same amount due to Maestro. Now, what the seller calculates as the loss on sale, the factor calculates as finance revenue. So this is that 2% finance revenue. And then finally, the cash is the same as the cash received by Meister the seller. That's the amount of cash that's paid by the factor. So the difference between the receivable minus the holdback minus the finance revenue is the amount of cash. We now proceed to the second requirement where we'll assume that economic conditions are a little different and Maestro has to guarantee a portion of the receivables as recourse. Maestro is the one that estimates that the fair value of the recourse obligation is 5%. So this is something that is not calculated by the factor, it's estimated by the seller. So Maestro figures that the value of the recourse obligation is going to be 5% of the amount factored. So our requirement is to prepare the journal entries for both parties, this time with recourse.
We can begin this one uh, the same way as the previous one. We can save the cash until the end. We debit the amount due from the factor exactly the same way as previously, 875,000 total receivables, 75% which is factored, and the 3.5% holdback is still applicable. Now we don't know what the loss on sale is at this point, so let's just hold off for a second on this one and jump right to the accounts receivable. This amount isn't going to change either. Our accounts receivable is still 75% of the total 875,000. But now we have a new line item here. We have a recourse liability. And that recourse liability represents that amount that Maestro must guarantee the factor. And we calculate the recourse liability as the amount factored. So we're always going back to the original 875 total accounts receivable, 75% of which is factored and the recourse value is determined to be 5%. So 32,813 is the amount of the recourse liability, which is also simply this amount times 5%. Now we're getting close to be able to figure out what our loss on sale is. If you recall from the previous scenario without recourse, we calculated the loss on sale as simply being the amount factored, 875 total accounts receivable times 75% sold times the finance fee. But this time, we add the amount of the recourse liability to that previous calculation. So our loss on sale is basically the finance portion plus the recourse liability. And therefore, we can now determine how much the cash is by the leftover. And we can say that, well, 656, 250 receivables plus the recourse liability minus the loss on sale minus the amount due from factor is the debit to cash. Hey, and guess what? That's the same amount of cash that we had under a no recourse or without recourse scenario. So the amount of cash is still the difference between the sum of the finance fee plus the holdback. This calculation here does not include the recourse liability, or so the 5% recourse not included. That represents a liability that we would have to reimburse the factor for, provided that the receivables that we sell them aren't all good or all collectible. And now we can jump over to receivables or us side, the factor, and that journal entry is exactly the same as without recourse. The factor does not account in any way for the recourse liability. If it has a problem with the receivables, it will go after Maestro for all or a portion of the recourse liability, but that doesn't affect the journal entry. So debit to accounts receivable and credits to the amount due for the holdback, a credit to the finance revenue, and the same amount of cash paid as previously. So some key points to remember, sales of accounts receivable with and without recourse typically include a holdback and a finance fee. Factoring of accounts receivable with recourse includes the fair value of a recourse obligation by the seller, and it's recorded only by the seller, not the factor. And finally, factored journal entries are identical for both recourse and non-recourse scenarios. So that concludes tutorial 15 on accounting for sale of accounts receivable. We hope you found it useful.